yeah because i know what they were looking at and like so oh, okay. <laughs> had that diagram and i i'm glad i asked them to articulate like what is this you know mm -hmm. like what what are you seeing these little circles doing kind of thing yeah. um i because i think the third resource was like go to our online textbook mm -hmm. okay it was a familiar picture another familiar picture if i could move on to like yeah, yeah. question or like where to go next yeah. is kind of around two of the interactions that were repeated in my memory from all three classes basically the one distribution that's actually a binomial distribution and it's like flipping coins but it like came up in a lot of people's searches i felt like it was a great opportunity it was like a potential opportunity to say like here's how we bridge from our last unit on random variables with like flip mm -hmm. the coin 10 times what are the different outcomes for how many heads you get and then like this sampling distribution or Geetha, your your tag was something around like yeah they both are distributions but like can we differentiate between the two yeah it'd be like a next move because i i really want to bridge units better than i think i have done up until this point it always just feels like here's random variables and now let's move on to sampling distributions and not seeing a connection um, if I could keep going for a minute, I'm also yeah. thinking about how I think this was good preparation for even in the long run, like next year, I know what to anticipate when I'm at this point in the curriculum, but I think that I could even, you know, short, short run, what's going to happen for the rest of the year, um, collect some of those conceptions that I want them to like come up to a wall against and make sure to like pose them to the class in yeah. a productive way, kind of like draw from the activity that we started the unit with. I'm not really drawing from it anymore. It was just kind of something we did that one day and the question persisted, but I didn't, I want to be drawing from the things they came up with as a way to drive the discussion throughout the unit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, or if folks have ideas on like how to engage differently in like when I would go up to the pairs, I'd be open to hearing that too. Oh, sorry. There's a lot on my mind. Um, one yeah, other I... was around Githa, just like there were places when I was surprised. I was like, I was just like, I don't know how to push them out because I'm surprised with what's like, what's coming at me. So they're like, that's in a sense where I feel like I either could have prepared more for this to happen, like anticipated what they were going to find, or at least now I'm like using this as like, now I can anticipate what's going to happen um, the next time we come to this point or going on to the next unit, get ready to anticipate so that I can push the math a little bit forward. Yeah. I'm hearing a couple different questions that are all kind of related. One was about like how to make a clear bridge between this unit and previous units. Mm -hmm. Um, one was about how to continue using these organizers as resources, especially around conceptions that they have that you want them to butt up against. Mm -hmm. And then also, like, were there ways that you might have engaged differently with the pairs, especially in terms of addressing the math? Yeah. Yeah, those are your questions? Yeah, if anyone wants to jump in in any way. Yeah. Those ideas. I would love if you merged question one with question three, like ask the students directly, how does what we're doing connect across the units or if I'm yeah. not phrasing correctly, but you know what I mean? Yeah. How, how is, how is this relevant to previous work in previous units and where are we going with all of this? Mm -hmm. have, it's interesting to hear what they think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the, the questioning question is interesting because you wanted to leave it open-ended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not like they necessarily have prior knowledge that they could refer to that you could, you know, uh, nudge them on. Mm -hmm. um, and you don't want to discourage them from the path they're already taking or forging. Um, mm. But I, I think yeah, the questions you were asking were good. I think they were meaningful because you were yeah. just asking them – to explain what they had on their paper, why they drew that. And I think that's all you can kind of do to guide them at that point. Um, unless somebody's super off the mark, then maybe you can, you know, <laughs> guide them a little bit yeah. more. And I guess when I saw the binomial distribution, I felt like we were off the mark and I wasn't mm -hmm. like prepared to like, 
what I want to pose is like, wait, we've seen that distribution before. Like, what do we know about this one? That's kind of a red flag that like, that's from the old unit. That's not, you know, like in quotes sampling distribution. Yeah. Or, I mean, but yeah. Yeah. No, I get you. Maybe you could even ask, does this graph look familiar to you? Uh huh. Or where have you seen something like this? Uh huh. Um, because a lot of times I feel like kids type things into Google and they just trust that. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Front or the, the first thing is going to be yep. what they should be putting mm-hmm. on their paper. Like next um, year, I want to tell them to search it in quotes, basically. Mm, yeah. Like to get that phrase, because it is a specific kind of distribution that didn't necessarily right. come up in their search for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they have to sort through all of the information that was given to them. Mm-hmm. But I think even helping them, that could be a gutting question. Have you seen a graph like this before? Yeah. Yeah. If they say no, then that's a super red flag. It's like, well, were you paying? Were you here? Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Were you here last chapter? (laughs) I was wondering when you saw those kids who had the binomial distribution, were you hoping to go in the direction? Like, did you want them to come up against like the search wasn't actually like it was probably really the search's fault. Um, like they don't know what a sampling distribution is at this point. So like, there's no good reason why they wouldn't put that down, especially if it looks familiar. So I was wondering if it was like, did you want to push them to be like, that's not the, like that graph isn't actually representing a sampling distribution or did you want to move them in the direction of like, how can we connect this binomial distribution to sampling distributions? I think I was asking myself mathematically, okay. how does this binomial distribution connect to a sampling distribution? That was a question so I was going to ask you all. So I was like, prepared, I don't think I was yeah, I wasn't <laughs> okay. prepared to ask them that. And <laughs> I think I could have anyway, but mm-hmm. I think a route I could have gone before I like went home and did more research on my own was like, um, asking them, like, looking at the binomial distribution, like, okay, we know that we're supposed to be researching sampling distributions, like, how do you think this connects to the idea of a sample? And they might say, like, this is a sample, what I, what I think I would say is, like, this is a sample of 10 coin flips, and how the distribution of heads could turn out. Mm. And then we could do that over and over again, and it leads to the thing that is a sampling distribution. Mm. But it, so, it was my own, like, feeling like, ooh, I don't know the connection for myself yet. That yeah, I didn't So care. I kind of, like, fell back on, like, it's okay. Today is open. So I'm just going to keep asking, like, what did you find? What do you think of this? You know? Right. In that moment, I was kind of thinking, like, like, is Rachel going to let him keep going with that? Is she not? Like, how is she going to – what's she going to do? Um And I wondered how you could leverage the other squares in that organizer to help them get at that. Like, Mm. um, cause when they Google sampling distribution (laughs) definition, like it's not going to be any connection (laughs) to that graph at all. Like it's going to cut, like that conception is going to be butted up against naturally. Yeah. When they ask their wonderings, like their wonderings aren't going to, they're going to be weird wonderings because it's a graph that isn't representing it. Um, uh-huh. or like the notation even like, yeah is, this, is all of this notation represented somewhere on the distribution like it's not if they're looking at a binomial like yeah connections but yeah it could help differentiate from the binomial distribution they found and the thing we're actually on a quest to find yeah, yeah I like that idea of like going like sort of pointing at what definition they maybe already found or a lot of kids like found a lot of good notation yeah and I, I think since you were also talking about like how to, um, keep using this organizer, mm-hmm. like where in the, in the unit is there a good place for them to go back and revise their organizer? Mm-hmm. Now, if you have a better definition, like maybe the one you found on the internet isn't very, like doesn't make sense to you or isn't meaningful to you, or now you have a different picture that you want to include. Uh-huh. Or you want to show yeah. some links between the definition and the picture and the notation. Uh-huh. Or you have new wonderings. And like a Google search, like, let's put it in quotes this time. Like, I can imagine us yeah. going back to that. And now they've actually, like, we have finished that unit now. And their distributions now look more like a whole bunch of P hats underneath a curve. Like mm-hmm. um, sample proportions or like the little X bar symbol. Like, the idea that we took samples over and over again came out in their drawings. It would have been Mm -hmm. cool if I had connected it back.